And so the thing is that what happened, I went to practicum, and they, they have like this handbook about what you can and cannot wear. So this day, I had on this outfit, and our clinical director, and I, the people who are clinical directors have a lot of power, right? Which is like amazing and scary at the same time, right? And she's a clinical director, and we're sitting there, and she points me out, and she says, you know, uh, we cannot wear that here. And that wasn't even the handbook that you could wear hats, right? And so we asked her, well, well why do you say that? She says, well, that's associated with gay men. <gasps> Luckily, though, I did have some accomplices in white Jewish uh, uh, um, folks from New York stepped in, intervened, and said, no, not today, not on our watch, right? Because they knew I didn't have the capacity at the moment to say anything. She called me in and said, hey, you know what? That was my bad. You know, I think it's my age, I think it's my race, and I'm, I think it's all of it, and some more. Right? So we got to be careful as people who have power in this field that we are doing everything we can to make sure that our, that our supervisees, that our, our, our colleagues, that our clients are feeling like we care about them, right? A lot of the things that are traumatic for us are on the right side, meaning they are involuntarily not conscious. But disability justice is a framework that was designed by people of color queer people of color, and a lot of trans and gender non-conforming people of color as well. Um, and they don't get credit for their work. So we're going to lift their names up today. My definition of ableism, I think of ableism as the false notion of a normative body, and the cultural favoritism given to people whose bodies are closest to that norm. By whose standards is that deemed the best or norm body? There's also a misconception that people don't know that they're intersex. But I will say most people know that they have some sort of variation. They might not know that it's an intersex variation. They might not know that there's a community they can be part of. Um, but because it is medical, because it's often associated with other things that might require medical treatment, people know. And I feel like it's also important to say that it's a biased and bigoted view that presumes that trans people are trans because they are mentally ill. I, I want to hear from you and, and you talking about this concept of like, where do you languish that dynamic around forgiveness being a gift versus being a weapon of expectation and silencing? So for me, forgiveness is it's not about anybody but me. So I'm not actually giving a gift. Um, I'm actually taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's that part about this idea that people, uh, I, I just want to call out that I believe that people of color and female uh, you know, body people forgive constantly. Like we wouldn't be in the world if we didn't. There's this level of forgiveness that, that we're constantly doing. And it is a certain level of labor. I think that um, if you have betrayed or misstep or cause somebody harm um, and you are granted forgiveness, that is point one. That is not your end point. That is the point for you to start the work so that you no longer have to ask for that forgiveness or be on the receiving end for that, of that forgiveness. Thank y'all for coming. Y'all stuck with us the whole day. Thank yes. you presenters for being so vulnerable and sharing your stories and uh, come talk to us after. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Thank you.